Nikki Schwears has been on Charleston County Council since 2006. And this November, he's asking residents of District 2 to give him another chance. In this edition of Quintess Close Ups, I speak exclusively with him one on one. And be sure to download the free Quintess Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Well, Dickie, it is so good to meet you, really. Yes, sir. Likewise. I appreciate this. I want to take it back to the Mutual News article that was published just recently, January 11th. Okay. It says this, Schwerz announced re-election bid for Charleston County Council. The actual article reads like this, Charleston County Councilman Dickie Schwerz announced he will seek a fourth and final term on council. Tell me, what brings you to your fourth and final term? Uh, Quentin, you know, I, I never really planned on this being long term. I, I have a, a, a very deep interest in the lifestyle here in the Low Country. Um, I, I just love Charleston County, born and raised here, and uh, it, it compelled me into politics back in 2006. Wow. And um, I, have, uh, I have learned a lot. I hope I have accomplished a lot. And I, again, I didn't want to make a career of this, so I didn't want to be a career politician. Some might argue uh, if I win this term, I would be at 16 years. But uh, I, I just feel like it is time for me to, to see the end in sight. But I do feel like, especially with the second half cent sales tax uh, being passed now, but not yet implemented, right. there are some, some very big things that I think I can accomplish in my, in my last four years if I'm so fortunate. And you actually stated this in a statement to the Mutual News. You said this quote, it has been a privilege to represent the citizens of Charleston County on Charleston County Council. My mission is to continue to advocate for fiscally conservative policies and government efficiency while providing necessary services that enhance our quality of life. Two things. Mm -hmm. What are those fiscally conservative policies in your mind? I do not support uh, property tax increases. We, okay. we have had a number of them proposed. Um, two or three of them during my tenure have passed. Right. Uh, I have not supported those. I don't think they're necessary. I, I think efficiency in government can accomplish the same thing as a tax increase. I think we're too quick to turn for more money from the taxpayers. And I don't, I don't think in, in, in no case that I've been on council so far was that necessary. We have uh, gained a lot more efficiency in the county. Um, some of, some of the uh, programs I put forward, such as uh, when we determine which roads were we going to we're going to resurface or improve? Right. We use a cost benefit analysis now. That was not being done when I arrived on council. It was all it was really p political maneuvering, which um, is just against my nature as a politician. I say that I shouldn't say that as a politician, I guess, but it, it, it's just against my nature to let politics win out when it should be a cost benefit analysis. In other words, if we can serve. If we can improve a road that serves, you know, uh, 30 houses uh, for the same price that we can improve another road and serve three, I'm going to serve 30. And, and those types of efficiencies um, are sometimes missing in government. Sometimes it's who, who's, who's connected on that road that can get that done, and that's always uh, troubled me. i got to get back to the roads in just a second, mm -hmm. but what's your definition of quality of life? You know, quality of life... We, we are extremely fortunate in Charleston County. I'm, uh, I'm 55 years old now. I was born in 1962, and I was born into the greatest quality of life in all of South Carolina. I would argue in the whole world. Mm. And a large, uh, unfortunately, we've been discovered. So quality of life for me is holding on to the things that make Charleston County so wonderful but recognizing that, that times do change, things do change, but let's don't let the good go away when we welcome the changes. Mm. You talk about roads. I know right now there's two issues ahead of you guys. Yes, sir. The completion of 526 and the Glen McConnell Parkway. Mm -hmm. Where are you with those two issues? I have not supported 526, and I think it uh, suits me very well as a fiscal conservative. I have said all along, when I arrived on council in 2007, I, I said then that as long as 526 is on the table with its extraordinary price tag, then other things won't get done. Um, traffic congestion on Johns Island and even West Ashley uh, is certainly something that needs to be dealt with, but for 11 years now that I've been on council, 
that project has been stagnant and other projects that could have been done in that time we could have already done them in that time they have sat on the table waiting on 526 even if we decide tomorrow that we will build 526 you're probably looking at another 10 years for that so we, we need to move forward with projects that we can do and actually we finally are we finally are moving forward with some projects on john's island that will improve that traffic situation those projects should have been finished five years ago how did politics creep into this how did politics creep into what the roads project 526 that that's actually an interesting uh question quentin because when i when i arrived on council in 2007 526 was already in the plans but it was not a county project it was actually more or less coming from the state house not from county council county council was approached with sponsoring being the local sponsor of the project okay and being a member of county council, it might have even been 2008, either 2007 or 2008, I can remember the folks on county council being extremely reluctant to be that sponsor because that project was not supposed to cost Charleston County taxpayers anything, nothing additional anyway, right. other than the state taxes they were already paying for. So they are paying for it, but it wasn't supposed to cost us anything in county tax dollars. Um, but because there was there was a uh, an apparent need for a local sponsor uh, the leadership of county council at that time reluctantly accepted that responsibility mm. but it's not because the county council members were all for the project even at that time it was it was just not it, it wasn't our pet project and it, it, it has been interesting for me to watch that evolve because at one time County Council even had a majority that voted that we didn't want to build the project. And that very quickly, political pressures were brought to bear and that, that very quickly changed. But that project has never been one that County Council was just totally supportive of. You talk about County Council just, I believe, last week. Mm -hmm. You had the new vote for Vic Wall to continue as chairman and we Curtis Sass as we vice did. chair. Yeah. Where were you on that issue in your mind? I, it was it was between Teddy Pryor and Vic Rawl, right. and uh, the two of them we have not typically um, seen eye to eye on a lot. It's, it's interesting that we have a a five to four majority uh, Republican council right now. Right. The two individuals that were running for that position were actually both uh, Democrats. I, I hold nothing against them for being Democrats. I do hold it against them. Yeah, their positions quite often differ from mine. Uh, I'm friends with both of them, right. great friends with both right. of them. Um, but their positions differ greatly. If I voted for Vic for chairman, then Teddy Pryor would be mad at me. If I voted for Teddy Pryor for chairman, then Vic Rawl would be mad at me. So it was, it was a no-win situation for me. Wow. Yeah. You talk about 2007 to right now. What is the biggest difference about Charleston County Council right now as far as serving? The council I serve with now is not as fiscally conservative, conservative as when I arrived. When I arrived on council, I didn't know how good I had it, to be honest with you. We had uh, Tim Scott as chairman. Right. We had Joe McEwen, who ended up being Tim Scott's uh, right. chief of staff, I believe. That's I don't right. know that he is now, but he was at the time. Uh, Joe McEwen, we had uh, Curtis Bostick. Right. Um, My main man. After that, we had uh, Paul Thurman. Right. We, we had some, some guys that were really, even Colleen Condon, right. a, a Democrat, was That's very right. fiscally conservative. Um, we, we had a wonderful team that really believed that we didn't need to raise taxes. We didn't need to raise property taxes. And basically, the directive was given to staff at that time, okay, bring us a budget. I can remember Tim Scott saying it. Bring us a budget with no tax increase. And they would do it. That, that has evolved through time. That has not been the case um, in the last, I'm going to say, six or seven years. We have, council as a whole, excluding me and excluding uh, one or two others, um, ha has had to sit and watch as the council was very open to an increase in taxes. And uh, I, I just have never thought it was necessary. You know, I was reading this particular article, and it's, it reads this from the Mutual News. Mm -hmm. Schwerz District includes east of Highway 17 in Mount Pleasant. All the other palms and Sutherland's out, mm -hmm. south of Broad Street in the city of Charleston, and the R and Fellow Bill regions, which I love. Yes. You know where I'm going with this question. And yes. this is a question everybody's been talking about. Okay. 
offshore drilling. Mm -hmm. Where are you with that? I, I don't support it. Um, again, the quality of life along the coast, I have 24 miles of coastline right. in my district. That's, that's, that's the reason my district makes sense. Sure. That's what brings it all together is 24 miles of coastline. Um, offshore drilling would, would, would jeopardize what we all love about the low country. We, we love the water. We love living on the coast. Sure. It, it would jeopardize that. To say that it can be done safely offshore, they can bring it to port, you'll never know they're there. I, I mean, history has proven that that is not the case, and I don't think it will be the case going forward. Uh, gr growing up, Quentin, I actually lived on Charleston Harbor, and I can remember as a child, I was, I was probably seven or eight years old, and I can remember a, an oil spill in Charleston Harbor. It was not substantial. But it was enough to coat the marsh in Charleston Harbor. Okay. It was the worst looking thing I've ever seen. I still remember that to this day. Wow. And, and for the oil producers to say that that would never happen, I don't think is realistic. Uh, another thing, the beauty, of it, the beauty of it is that oil out there, if there's oil out there that's, that's a quantity that we could harvest, okay. it's not going anywhere. There, there, there is no shortage of oil in this nation right now. So if there are marketable and, and harvestable oil reserves off the coast of Charleston, it's fine. It'll, it'll be there. It'll be there for 100 years. It'll be there for, I don't think it has a shelf life. It'll be there forever. So if we determine at a later date that, yes, we are so desperate that we have to have that oil, we can revisit it then. You know, we talked off camera just a few minutes ago about family, mm -hmm. and you showed me a couple of pictures of your children sure. and, your mom, and your wife <laughs> yes, your mom, and yourself. You said you didn't really age. <laughs> I said my wife didn't. That's right. I, I aged in the picture. <laughs> I'm trying to give you guys both compliments. Okay. <laughs> but tell me this, when you take off your political hat, who's mm -hmm. Dickie Schwears? I, I'm, I'm a guy that loves the outdoors. I love my family. I, there, there's nothing better for me than to spend a day in the outdoors in Charleston County and even the surrounding counties. Sure. In, in, any chance I get, my wife will tell you, my kids will, will tell you, they join me quite often. We love to be out in the woods. We, we love to enjoy the natural resources of Charleston County. That's amazing. We, we love going. Uh, my mother still lives in the old village in Mount Pleasant. Yes. We, we visit there quite often. I mean, we do. I was there last night, as a matter of okay. fact. I had supper with her last night. Just... Uh, you know, the, the, the natural resources in the low country and also the family and sure. the friends. I mean, right. the, the, folks you, uh, the folks you meet in the, the low country that really are, are have bought into the low country lifestyle, it's just good people. That is amazing. That's so good to hear. Yes, sir. Well, Dickie Schwears, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Absolutely. It was a good time. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you.